Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here with one more Red River paper test video. What we have here is a wonderful, wonderful paper, highly recommended by me, as I have actually used it in the past, Palo Duro Soft Gloss Rag, 100% cotton rag paper. And you can look up the specifications online on their website, but I will give you a quick set of stats here so that you get an idea of what you're dealing with here. We have a 310 GSM weight paper, 16.5 mil, 100% cotton rag, microporous coating, semi-gloss surface. The printable side has got a reflective coating. In other words, it has a little bit of gloss. No OBS whatsoever, that is wonderful. And plain paper in the reverse surface. It is recommended that on an Epson printer you use premium photo paper semi-gloss or premium semi-gloss photo paper. Canon printers photo paper plus semi-gloss. And I would choose the highest quality setting. All right, so that is it. Let's jump right into the results of my testing. Of course, I know these papers work and perform admirably with original inks, either for Epson or for Canon printers. There was no point on me doing that, wasting my expensive paper on redundant type tests that I know will perform well. And it's, if the case is that you use OEM, I recommend that you get some of this paper if you want the finest fine art prints you have ever seen, at least at the price range. It's not cheap, but it's a lot less expensive than most of the other high end by the big name brands. OEM inks, just download their profile for your printer and you should be able to get amazing results. All right, I created my own profile as I always do with my i1 Pro 2. And I decided for this case, I didn't wanna waste three sheets of paper just on a 1600 patch profile. So I decided let's run a 400 patch profile. I use double scanning method. So it prepared a beautiful profile for me. At the end, I am using the Pro 10 Precision Color Signature Edition plus OEM Red, Red River Palo Duro Soft Gloss Rag. So let's very quickly take a look at the standard image. And as soon as this came out of the printer, it kind of blew me away. One negative point, because it is a relatively thick paper, I did get a little bit of a head strike here. So I recommend you use the anti-abrasion setting in your driver. That will have to be accepted every single time you print, okay? If you click on that box and you save that to the printer, then every time you print using those settings, you will have to accept that. It will just sit there and not print until you accept that you actually do want to use anti-abrasion settings. So keep that in mind. So immediately, as we always do, we look at the overall result. I'm looking at a neutral result. I see it as perfectly neutral. This is beautifully depicted. Black here, just above black, very clearly visible. White, just below white, very clearly visible. Then the extreme 254, I actually see, you can't see this, but I can, a tiny, tiny little bit of density on this square here. 255 would just be the plain paper base. 53 is visible, 52 as well. Same thing here. All right, so we have here the application also of Chroma Optimizer. So that applies the sheen that you see, a little bit of an extra sheen. If you don't like that, then use automatic. I used overall. Use automatic application of Chrome Optimizer that will only be applied on areas that have ink applied to the paper, okay? Overall does it overall, as the name implies. The kids' faces look perfect. The Autogamma color rendition here looks very good to me. I can actually see the difference between these three greens. That is very critical. And then you go back to your monitor and you put this next to your monitor and you go, wow, not so much this here because this is out of gamut, remember, but all of these images here, 
pretty much match my monitor. And that is due to the fact that it's a very well calibrated monitor. So let's quickly look at some images here, some real images. I have a black and white. This is not a black and white conversion. I downloaded this from a site. I edited it so that it had a black point and a white point, and then I played around with the middle tones until I got the rendition that I like. Every bit of detail in areas that would normally block up, these areas normally would block up because they fall way down here. The lightest areas here in this window with the window broken here, the glass, the uh, reflection, it's all there. The bricks, the grays, I mean, it's just fabulous. And of course, this was originally edited with sort of a vignette applied to it. So maybe I wouldn't have done that if this had been my own image. But anyway, nothing to sneeze at as far as a really good image to print as a black and white. And this is great. This looks like I would put this in any gallery. The surface is beautiful. It's just so smooth. It reminds me of really fine, good silver base paper back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Yeah, so that's a winner. That turned out great. Let's take a look at something in color now. And you guys may have seen this in the past. This is an image that I found again on a special site that has a lot of photographers posting their work. I'm not gonna give away the site, so please don't ask me, okay? Do not ask me. You just search for free images on online and maybe you'll run into something similar to this. All right, so this region here was attacked by graffiti artists. I don't think there's a square inch of wall space that has not been painted. It acts as a gorgeous, gorgeous backdrop for this very delicately colored subject. And again, it, it, it's just beautiful. I look at the edges. There's something about this paper that seems to just capture the edges. Any edges that have a contrast change just are captured beautifully. It's almost as if there's like minimum, almost zero dot gain. In other words, the dots are not spreading like they tend to do on matte papers and some other papers. So the sharpness rendition of this image is as is on the monitor. Mm. Anyway, beautiful gradations here of the skin tones, the top, the dress has lavenders and a little bit of blue area here because of the reflections from these walls. This is just inside the shade. There's a little bit of sun up front. And again, this is just beautiful. And the printer just hit it out of the ballpark, I tell you. All right, let's look at this one here. Now, this is one that I printed before, and it is ridiculously difficult to print because these colors are just out of control. Now, let me show you the difference between this one and the same printer, same ink set, but on Pro Luster. This looks not even sharp to me. Okay, this does not look sharp at all. Maybe, maybe the slight enlargement has something to do with it because it's not a very high resolution image to begin with. But I bet you if I was to enlarge this to this size, I would have better edge detail. The blacks, this area, the contrast between this yellow edge here and the background is just ridiculously different. I mean, just so, so sharp. The same thing here. I think this would stand up to a little bit more enlargement or upscaling. So anyway, although this is beautiful, don't get me wrong, this is even more beautiful. Beautifuler, how about that for a made up word? All right, so again, out of the ballpark performance. Those reds are ridiculous. These lavenders here, these, these greens. I'm looking for something that may be, yeah, here's some purple. Crazy, gorgeous. This area here is wet. The reflections that it was able to depict Although the image, again, is not a really high resolution image. It's not even probably a good image. It's probably a highly compressed JPEG. Still did a fabulous job on it. So anyway, would I recommend this paper to anyone? Well, 
I recommend that you're starting out with a Pro 10 or similar type printer, go ahead and master printing the process, color management, and so on with a lower cost paper. Once you master that lower cost paper, then you can migrate to something that's gonna cost you two to three dollars a sheet, even in this size, okay? You do not wanna jump directly into a paper that's gonna cost you six, seven, eight, nine dollars, sometimes ten dollars a sheet, and then you make mistakes that you should have then taken care of a long time ago during your learning curve process with a lower cost paper. So that's my recommendation. But once you have nailed down your color management workflow so that it's always predictable and consistent, then you can go ahead and begin to print on these high-end papers. That will just make the process a total pleasure because the results that you will get will simply knock you out. So that is it. The next week or so, I'm gonna be away. But when we come back, we're gonna continue this series. If this is the only thing that you are interested in, there will be a playlist dedicated to Red River Papers. Then as I proceed to begin to test other papers from other makers, I will create specific playlists for those as well. And you should be able to just click on one of those playlists and watch the whole thing. And either watch all of the videos within that playlist or the ones that interest you. And I hope that that is a very good resource for you guys who are looking into outside of the normal realm of papers, say by Canon and Epson. All right, that is it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. As always, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.